in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known as the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Ra. I hope that you enjoy the feature that follows this introduction. And I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. And like always, think for yourself. With that said, the feature presentation begins right now. Take it easy. I'll see you later and respect you. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. In the name of my ancestors, I am the Angel Snub Nub Seven. This is the Realities Temple on earth. How can I try to explain something to us? Um, I guess I could do it like this. Try as you might. Try as you might. We are not going to be able to save our, our people, all of them. Many of them are enemies to black power and black liberation. They are our enemies. There are black people who prey on other black people. Every day on the news you hear about these black people. In fact, they are not black people. They are dark Europeans that call themselves black. A dark European is a dark person, perhaps a descendant of a slave in America, that think like the racist Caucasian slave master. The only thing on his mind is black destruction. That's what's wrong with the Uncle Tom mentality. They don't care nothing about black independence, black power. They have a racist Caucasian mentality. They want us to do good, but they want us to do good so that we'll be a better slave. Not take our talents to use for ourselves. Then you have those in the street that prey on our elderly people, that prey on us. They don't care nothing about black power or liberation. Some of our people have turned into animals. This is a reality. This is why it is so important that we, those of us in black liberation and struggle, we must combine our forces because the first real enemy we got to deal with is those within our own people. You got nigger trash that don't care about black liberation. They care about getting their next dope fix. They care about beating the black woman up. They care about stealing your car. Robbing your house. There's nothing that you can say to them. They are the leeches living among us. And this is where I must agree with uh, the brother TMOT. And see the problem is in his videos he is fixated on these I call nigger trash. That's not all our people. Because if that was all our people it would be outright chaos and mayhem and that don't exist 
But you do have a segment of us that you'll never be able to reach. And we should be, and we must place ourselves in a position to defend ourselves against them before any so-called racist Caucasian people. I call them nigger trash. Now, we must give our people the benefit of a doubt. But when it is clear that these are our enemies, then they need to be, and we should treat them as an enemy, no matter how dark their skin, because they will kill you. They will murder you for the hood cap off your car. Our people, some of our people have become pure savages. Not only should we want to separate from a racist society, but we should want to separate from those of, of our people who have become savage. They have become conditioned and enjoy this way of life. They don't want to hear it. All that they care about is smoking and drinking. They don't care about black liberation or power or their ancestors. They don't want to hear none of that anyway. But they'll pull a gun on you and blow your brains out. And won't think about you tomorrow because that's how far gone they are. That's who and that is the mentality that is killing our people today. You don't have white people in trucks running around lynching black people. These nigger trash are doing the job for them. And so the Ku Klux Klan is in the unemployment line. They don't have nothing to do because the, these Negroes are doing the job they wish they could do. And it is very, very sad. We must give our people the benefit of a doubt, but at the same time, we must be smart enough to protect ourselves from these and separate ourselves from them because they do all this stupid Negro stupid stuff and then those of us who are law abiding citizens raising our families learning about ourselves trying to do what's right but these Negroes are always on the news and then we as a people are described like them. We're not described like the Barack Obama family. Michelle and the daughters and the little wonderful unity they have as a family. That's not how blacks are described. We are described as these savages. And we should want to separate ourselves from them. Say, that's them Negroes. That's not what's happening here. So not only do I want to separate myself from so-called this racist Caucasian society, I want to separate myself from our people who have gone beyond the point of no return. They don't care. And they want to help the enemy by their behavior bring us down. We need to separate from ourselves. They are just as bad as the Uncle Tom type mentality. Because the Uncle Tom wants you to do good so you can benefit the slave master's children. So both of these type of so-called black people, these dark Europeans, we want to avoid. That's why on my page, no dark Europeans allowed. I don't want you on my page. If you don't if you don't uh, support black independence, at one time we had Black Wall Street. There were black towns. And it was destroyed by Caucasians because they want us in this position of independence, this slave master relationship. And this Uncle Tom mentality wants us that way too. And these savage Negroes running around don't care one or the other. Because I'm just trying to survive. That's what they tell you. 
Man, it's hard out here. I'm just trying to survive. So you gonna kill me? I ain't got nothing, so you gonna break it to my house? Break my baby? Cause if you trying to survive? We need to get real. That's something we're gonna have to deal with too. Black power. Or are y'all just shucking and jiving? Just running your mouth. If you're not talking about unification of all the black power movements, then you ain't talking about nothing at all. It's a waste of time. So we might as well enjoy and stop complaining about Darion Albert and being shot down in the street and all these things. Stop complaining about it. Because if you can't unify, then it's all what you're talking about ain't nothing. Because this little group over here can't do nothing. This little group over there, it's when the hand balls up into this fist is when it becomes dangerous. Yeah, you can slap, but even the fingers are still together in a slap. They all have to be unified. And if you're not unified and not willing to unify, then you're just a bunch of talk. You got more power than you realize. Why do you think so many people are coming against me? Because they see that I'm like the glue that can cause us to unify. I'm the, I'm the voice that make people listen to want to become part of unification. So they angry and afraid. Don't give them what they want. This is your brother, Charlie Even Raw. This was, this was and is the reality's temple on earth. Peace. Respect you. This is Brother Tali coming back at you again. And, um, you know, now, I might catch a little heat for this, this, this particular subject. And I don't mind catching some heat. I like the heat. Because you know what Malcolm said back in the day? Um, let me get this together now. It takes tremendous heat against coal to form a diamond. Tremendous heat for a long time. Matter of fact, it takes millions of years to form a diamond. But after a lot of pressure, after a lot of heat, you get a diamond. And what is a diamond? One of the strongest uh, materials on this planet. And when you polish it, it's one of the most beautiful materials on this planet. So this is what I want y'all to do for me. Bring me the heat. Put the pressure on me. And do it for a long time. Keep me helping. Keep me running. Keep me boiling. So after it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, I'll become a diamond. All thing I need to do is a little polish. And I'm pretty already, so when you polish me up, I'm going to get even a little more handsome. I'm not going to say pretty, because when you relate pretty to a man, some of y'all go homosexual, and homosexuality is not happening here today, not with me personal, but if that's your thing, so be it. Now, again, I might be taking a little heat for this video, but I like the heat. I always have. I always have liked the heat. Now, I love black people. And as a former Muslim follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan at one time, I worked out in the street day and night from city to city, town to town, meeting various black people, shaking their hands and 
having dialogue, trying to make friends, trying to unify our people. And the majority, now, this is even to include gang members. I've been into some of the hideouts, if you want to call them, of certain gang uh, members and talk with them. I've been in the bars while blacks was getting drunk watching the strippers trying to uh, tell them about uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I've met all kinds of black people all over this country and the vast majority of us, regardless if we are getting drunk, regardless if we are woman chasing, regardless if we are righteous, or no matter what we are personally doing, the majority of us love ourselves. We want the best for black peoples, but we are so divided and confused and it's so much chaos. We really don't know what to do. Our organizations in the past have been destroyed and those that exist don't have the power that they used to have. And our children have, uh, their minds have been taken away from us through the influence of filth like uh, MTV and uh, I must even say and include BET, the influence of filthy uh, music videos, not to just blame rap, but all of them have some kind of filthy message that go along with them. There are no messages of these children in relation to teaching them on, uh, or guiding them to knowing who they are and what they can strive and really accomplish in this world. But again, in general, black people want the best for their race. But now, there are a segment of blacks, and I don't even want to call them black. I want to call them niggas. And I'm not going to even say nigger because a lot of my niggas want the same thing. They want black unity. They, they are proud of their blackness. So I'm going to add another uh, adjective. I said something about a verb last time, racist. Anyway, another adjective. Nigger trash. You have nigger trash that don't care nothing about nothing. They will rob you. They will murder you. They will do all they can to harm you. They don't give a damn about Harriet Tubman. They don't give a damn about Malcolm X. They don't give a damn about Martin Luther King. The only thing on their mind is oversexing themselves, trying to get money so they can front and try to be greater than uh, the children of our ancestors, uh, former slave master. They don't care nothing about black unity. They don't give a damn about education. They just don't give a damn. They are in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, I am the mighty, mighty, mighty Angus Nup Nup Seven, the host of this internet ministry, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rock. <clears throat> I want to make this short. <laughs> I do. I really try. Now that's a shame. When the uh, time limit was 10 minutes, 11 minutes or whatever, I would try to make things short. I always would take it to the max. And now that they gave us an extra five minutes, I still find myself taking it to the max. <laughs> but I guess it works for me. I'm known for it. I really strive to try to make things short and brief. But bruh, have a hard, hard time. So let me try to do it this time. 
But you know, also at the same time, a lot of you like to hear me speak. So, I guess it's all good no matter if it ends up short or if it ends up at the max. I'm just so happy that I can get any type of time with you because you are very important to me. In fact, that is the subject of this video. I received a comment and in this comment the author was telling me, brother, I admire your videos, you inspire me much, and what you say and what you have to bring to YouTube is wonderful. But if I were you, I would give up on these Negroes. I would give up on these dark Europeans. I would give up on these people that uh, have been called black. And uh, I very much understand. And I want to tell you openly and honestly, straight from the heart, if it was up to me, if it was up to me, I take all my channels down right now if it was up to me. And for me, me personally, and you've heard me say it before, if there's a God, if there, if there is any supreme power, I would like to talk to that God and tell him or her or it, destroy it all. Black man, white man, red man, all of humanity needs to be destroyed. They are failures. They are incompetent. They are children in the mind. They'll never grow up. They have not earned the right to live. They are troublemakers. And no life, even microscopic life, have had problems with these idiots ever since they've come on the planet. So for me, my suggestion, for me personally... Yeah, give up on these Negroes. Give up on all human beings, period. And destroy humanity, destroy the human race so tough that not one trace, nothing would be left. Not no skeletons, not no DNA, nothing of humanity be left behind. So the other life that comes behind won't have no idea that these fools, these arrogant, egotistical, greedy and selfish things even existed. Me personally. But it's not up to me. Well, who, well, who is it up to? It is up to the creation. To that which brought me into existence. And that which brought me into existence gave me love for these people. And that's something I can't get rid of. So even though myself personally, there's a part of me that says, the hell with them. Let them destroy themselves. These niggas will never be nothing. Look at them. They slaves. Ignorant. Here I am on YouTube trying to express black unity and yet I got these fools chasing me around. Trying to smear my reputation. But that's part of the job. It took 40 years to bring me into existence. And I'm made to deal with it. Because religious people said that God the supreme being is merciful and compassionate. So even though you have earned destruction and extinction, this great parent, that force that brought us into being, dictates that you begin.
given a final opportunity to avoid this because really at this time you are the best that life has produced but you're not acting and behaving in the best of balance you have not evolved and that's why I get upset with Christian people that's why I get upset with Muslims and other religious people because you keep telling us that we're children of God when you're going to grow up that is the problem you are physically adult people but your mentality is still like that of a child look at yourself watch yourself look at you you have no idea you think cause you got a job that make you grow you think cause you got a PhD that make you grow you think because you raise your children properly that make you grow it's a whole lot of other stuff and yeah that's nice that you grow in that manner but you have not grown mentally you have not grown what you call spiritually because your idea of spirituality is spooky it's mysterious and so you continue to, de to depend on your father your father to have this house of, of many mansions and you won't Wanna, you want to live with your father, but at the same time you turn around and talk about how you want to get your children out the house and they become independent and do their own thing. Now you tell me why as a child of God it's alright for you to stay at home with your mama, your daddy, your parent, but then you want to kick your physical children out of your house. It don't make any sense. Do you really know what you're talking about? What's wrong? And then, I don't understand this concept. What is wrong with staying with mama? What is wrong with staying with father? When you look at animal situations, you don't see, in order to spread out the species, certain individuals go out, but basically the family stays intact. Mamas and daddies and children don't be going nowhere. Where are you getting this concept from? Kicking your children out. Divide your family. That's what we suffered during slavery. When now we're doing it voluntarily. This child goes over here. That child, I want to show I'm independent. And you wonder why your family's in such a wreck. You wonder why your family is in disarray. You think you're doing the right thing. I cannot give up on my people because I'm not created that way and I love us and when you love somebody really love somebody you can take a lot you can bear a lot when you love somebody, they can be in a car accident and get all messed up. Laying in the bed, sliding all at the mouth. Urinating, defecating on themselves. But because of your love, you can clean them up. Even though it's disgusting. And you're not used to them being like that. But your love for them, you want to care for them because that's somebody that you love. These people claim that they love black folks but they attack black people they show great hatred I have never done nothing to nobody on YouTube but here come the hatred and the hatred comes from jealousy and envy because they want to be me I did not ask to be me but I have no choice in the matter because this is just the way I am. And whether you like it or not, I just got to do what I have been programmed to do ever since I was a little boy because of my experience. The majority of black people, there are at least 40 million black people in this country. I cannot give up on the 40 million. I, have, I don't know the 40 million. So, I don't know what, how, they will, 
how they will respond. I cannot base my decision on helping my people on some idiots. Let those idiots do what they feel they got to do. I wish them the best of luck. My mission and any of us who love our people, our mission is to embrace the 40 million black people that's out there and the poor little baby that's being born as I speak. They must be given an opportunity to hear the message. That's all that is required of me is to hear a message. Just like in Christianity, it's not your job to convert people. It's not your job to try to convince people to turn to God. Your job as a Christian, your job as a Muslim is simply to spread the word and tell them that Jesus is here and died on the cross for your salvation. If they reject that message, so what? That's on them. Because I know I've been told that lots of times. Well, brother, you know you got to accept Jesus. You told me the message. Now the ball is on my court. It's up to me. So now I'm flipping the script and turning it to you. The only way that you can get out of this situation, black man and woman of America, is to seek black unity. Keep listening to these fools that want to question my character. My, am I honest? Am I a scam artist? Am I wearing a Texas tie? Am I bald head? Who cares about that foolishness? We in our communities have a deep problem. We've had religion. We got education. We got voting. We got all these other things. We've been using for years and years and years. And nothing has been able to break the grip of death that is in the black community. You got it. What do you want to do? As a living person, living people move the dead. The dead can't move themselves. So if the people are dead, you can't expect them to do anything. So you got to cause, so those who are living must, like Jesus, raise the dead to life. Not the physically dead, but you got to, in some kind of way, unlock that key to their mind and awaken them so that they can express their greatest potential. Black man and woman, you got so much potential. You just don't realize it. And the enemies would like for me to shut up because as long as you are dead in your mind, they, it's business as usual for them. They benefit from your death. They collect on the your death certificate and insurance policy. So you got ignorant Negroes and the and some of these racist whites, they don't want you alive. But I will continue to talk for you and defend you and hopefully raise us up out of this condition, not only me, but all of us who are conscious and awakened. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Tony Gibbon Rock. Jot down your comments. I can't give up on you. You don't give up on yourself. This was. The reality temple on earth. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. In the name of my ancestors, I am the angel something of seven. Your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. What inspires me to make this video is that I was watching a video by my sister, my favorite little sister, Gata Aggressiva, I think that's how it's pronounced, 411. And uh, her video is in my favorites, and, or you can go to her channel. And she was speaking about being late. And she disabled the comments. Um, or the, I think she, I think, yeah, she, she disabled the comments or she put the comments on approval because we have silly people in YouTube land, especially if they don't have a liking to you, 
that will make mockery of your hurt and pain. I think that it is a it was a very brave thing for my little sister to place a camera before her and tell this uh, tragic story that should not happen to us, but many women suffer being raped and uh, sexually abused and uh, assaulted. And she wanted to share her experience so that perhaps someone else in YouTube land or well it has to be YouTube land um, that experience the same thing know that they are not alone and perhaps it will inspire them to be brave enough to testify or bring the one of whom done this horrible thing to them to justice um in my opinion, uh, there is no uh, punishment. Uh, I, I can't. I can only see, really, it being very extreme or death itself. That's the only punishment I can see when you violate a person like that. Uh, regardless, as you know, men get raped also. When you violate someone like that, it's. I know that it's a. It's a terrible feeling of being helpless and hopeless. And uh, I sort of can identify with her situation because I was not physically raped, but I was mentally raped, basically. As many of you know, I, was, uh, I suffered 10 years in a mental institution for no valid criminal or medical reason I was placed in that situation and I was done uh, and acted upon just because they had the power to do so and they done it if Gata or Gata aggressive for 411 can uh, put her story out in the public perhaps that should make me brave enough to say something that I kept uh, a little inside uh, for all these years. And what I want to say to us very quickly, because my time is running out, is that I felt hopeless. There was a time. See, men don't. Men are taught not to cry. But I'm telling you. I was placed in this mental institution of which some people, when they don't like you, they come on YouTube and they write these comments, I see why you was in a mental institution. Because they don't like you. But, uh, I was placed in a situation and I was told outright, you can be here the rest of your life unless you allow us to make you into something we know that you know that you're not but you need to do that in order for us to set you free what do you want to make me I want to make you an insane criminal mental patient that's why you was brought here because you committed a crime and you are insane as far as we're concerned and when you leave here, you need to understand, boy, that's what you are. So, and if you don't, we'll hold you until you break. Or you'll be here to the rest of your for the rest of your life. I used to sit at the window in my room. And the room, you're sitting behind glass, and it's bulletproof, unshatterable type glass. And I used to watch the birds fly and watch the people go up and down the street. And I knew I did not want to accept being made into a criminal, being made into a mental patient. 
I was made to go to, to all these classes for those who were repeat criminal offenders. And I was made to go to these classes that talk about mental illness. I cannot relate to these people and their delusional and paranoid behaviors. I don't experience those things. I cannot relate to a man who steal and rob and murder because I'm not no criminal. But if I don't accept this, then I'm doomed to die behind cold glass and steel. So there's a feeling of hopelessness that come on you. So I used to sit there in front of my window and look out. And I cried to God. I cried to Allah. I cried to Jesus. And I was like Jesus on the cross when he hollered to the Father, Why have thou forsaken me? And I admit, I cried. Because there's no hope. All hopeless. All hope was gone. I felt hopeless. There was no light at the tunnel. So I just had to since I knew I was never going to accept being a criminal, an insane mental patient, then I had to accept my reality that I was going to be locked up away from society and my family and all the things and my hopes and the little dreams that I had, I had no chance. It was over. And I sit on my bed and I cry like a damn baby. Because I felt hopeless. Almost had, almost had thoughts of suicide. Taking a bed sheet and putting it over the, the top of the door and hanging myself. Because if I'm going to be here the rest of my life, what kind of life am I going to have all locked up? That's not no life. There's no benefit to live like that. The only one who is getting benefit is the mental institution that makes $600 a day from my body laying in this bed in this room. Feeling of hopelessness. Crying like a baby. Grown man. Thinking about suicide. But as you can see, it did not happen. I did not give my enemies the pleasure of going out like that. I began to change my thinking. And the first thing I thought about was my ancestors who came over here in the hold of ships, who laid in their own feces, who laid in their own urine, who was treated like an animal. If they, for 300 years, endured this type of treatment, this ain't nothing. So stand up, Negro. You who are the sin of the slave. That's what I had to tell myself. Stop being hopeless. The fact that you're living today is the hope. Look deep and down yourself and grab that which caused your ancestors to survive this torture with a smile. And that's what I've done. So now you have me here today on YouTube stronger than ever. You can't break me. They tried it. There's nothing that you can say that can hurt my feelings. There's nothing that you can do can break me. There's not, not enough. There's no money that can buy me. So now, hopelessness has turned into high self-esteem. This is your brother, Talib, keeping raw. This was and is the reality's, reality's temple on earth. Peace. Okay, peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talib, Ibn Ra. And uh, I am the angel snubbed up seven. This is the reality's temple on earth. We're being a little informal today. I just had a, a quick thought on my mind, want to, instead of putting it on pen and paper, we're going to do it on video. <laughs>
All right. Now, there's a problem in the black community. And the problem in the black community is it's mind-boggling to many of us why we don't want to be independent from Caucasian people. Why we don't want to be free. Some of us think that we are free. Some of us think that we are independent. And I want to, those of you who become frustrated, you probably already know this, but I just want to remind us because dealing with black folks is very frustrating. It's it's ah, uh, woo! These black people can wear you out, and I want to tell you or remind you why it's so difficult to work with black people. One of the reasons. There are a few others, but we're going to concentrate on this one because this one here is probably the foundation that holds up the rest of it. Now, I want to give you. A quick example. When a person goes to jail. Now they was not born in jail. They was born free. Well actually if you are black being born in America you are never free. But I'm just going to say you just don't have any chains on you. So when you were born you were free. There is no child male or female that says, oh, when I grow up, I want to go to prison. Oh, when I grow up, I want to go to a mental institution. Oh, when I grow up, I like to go to jail. There's nobody in their right mind as a child that would ever say, oh, when I grow up, I want to be incarcerated. So, incarceration is a consequence of circumstance. And many times, we are the responsible party. We do something sometimes. Because we can be incarcerated, not of our choice. But we're going to say, we're not going to talk about innocent or guilty. We're going to talk about incarceration. So you're free. And when persons first get locked up, when incarceration is new, since you know, listen to what I'm saying to you. Since you know what freedom was, you want to get out of jail. You want to get out of prison. Because you knew what freedom was. So when you first speak to black people, the problem that we have in trying to relate to our people about being free is that they have never known freedom. They, they were not born into freedom. The only thing they know is some form of incarceration. Some form of being under the authority of somebody other than themselves. Somebody that don't look like them. That's all they know. So they think that incarceration is freedom. Just like your dog. You raised that dog from a puppy. The only freedom that dog ever knew was living in your house. That dog does not know anything about going out into the free world and catching a rabbit or doing something on his own. It always has been under your authority. Then, once a person becomes incarcerated, there's something called a person being institutionalized. Meaning they have accepted that incarceration and now they just learn how to live in that incarceration. So many of y'all think that people are really trying to get out of these jails and prisons and mental institutions and they really are not. Because they become institutionalized. This is their way of life. So when we talk to black people, African Americans, so-called Negro, 
those born descendants of slaves in America, it is difficult to talk to them because this is the only life they know. They become institutionalized in America. They, are, they don't mind the guard at the, at the prison cell. This is all that they know. They are just, we have become just like your pet dog. This is the only life we know. We don't know how to work outside of white people. But then these same white people, when they are unable, don't need you to hunt no more, don't need you to do tricks no more, don't need you for anything. They want to drive you somewhere and abandon you on the side of the road but they don't know how to do it. They can't get that job done. So the dog is able to stay at home and keep begging and keep begging. And then you think and you have the nerve to try to take over your master's house. You want, you want to eat steak. You tired of dog biscuits. I'm not comparing us to no dog, but I'm trying to give you uh, an example, uh, an analogy of our mentality. We become institutionalized. And I will even go to say this. Even though that holler black power, hotel Ashe, Assalamualaikum, praise Yahweh, even those individuals are still institutionalized. Because, see, you live comfortable in your jail cell. I know from experience. Because when I first got locked up, I really want to get free. But after a certain period of time, you sort of begin to like your incarceration. Because you still get everything that you want. You just can't go nowhere. You can still get the women. You can still get your drugs. You get three meals a day. You don't have to pay no bills. Get to play basketball every day. So you get comfortable. These people are comfortable in their jail cell. But one day, I woke up and just decided, no more. Because I'm better than this. The black people of America don't think they are better than how they're living right now. They are satisfied being institutionalized. I woke up one day and said, look, I got to get out of here. And see, another thing, when you have not been free for a long time, it is scares you. These black people are afraid to leave white folks. What am I going to do? That's the way I felt. I was afraid. I was locked up for a lot of years. And I was afraid to be free. Yes, I say it. I was institutionalized and I was a and then when I thought about being free, I was afraid. How I'm going to live? How I'm going to take care of myself? Things have changed. All these different thoughts in my head. But I began to think and look in the mirror and look at myself. Know who I am. And I had to begin to say, I'm better than this. I need my freedom. I can do better than this. To hell with these women in this place. The hell with their food, their TV. I don't want nothing to do with it. I want out of here. That began my journey to get free. By any means necessary. Within their law. Because I didn't want to jump the fence and have police chasing me. So I want to be free. But I didn't want nobody, the slave catcher, running and chasing me. So that's the problem with black America. 
That's the problem, Nation of Islam. That's the problem, Hebrew Israelites. That's the problem, Sarah Sudan said it. That's the problem, Moorside Temple. That's the problem, Ray Hagen, with our people. They are institutionalized. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? They don't see themselves better than this. They don't think they are they can become just as good or greater than the white man. Now, they will say it with their mouth, but when you see their actions, you see scared little children. So when I decided I'm going to be free, I just take my chances. If I die, I'm homeless on the street. I got to drink ditch water. I got to sell cans. Whatever might be, I have to go through. So be it. But I got to get the hell out of here because I can do better. Because under incarceration, you can't get better. It's to keep you locked down. It's to keep you in a certain position and place. You're there to benefit those who work for this system. So as long as black people are in America, you are here to benefit the white people in power. That's why the black community suffer. Their community build up. Everybody's community build up. But ours steady go down. Because we are institutionalized. We are incarcerated. And those who are incarcerate, in, uh, incarcerated, they only benefit those who captured them. Another form of slavery. Now, when you do a crime, you should be punished. But we as a people, we have committed no crime to deserve what has happened to us for over 40 years. There's no crime that can be committed to justify us going through what we've been through for 400 years. That's why I can't get with this God and y'all making up all these old pitiful excuses why God allowed black people to suffer like this. There's nothing. And then these devils that done this to us, they run around on vacation in Hawaii, in the Bahamas, and we still suffer. So you're dealing with people who are institutionalized. They don't know, they don't know no other life. They don't see no value in themselves. So our job, for those of you who are awake, we need to rise up and become the example that you can get free, that you can do better than being locked up. Then when they see you do well and better, that will inspire the rest. But y'all too busy fighting each other. Jealous. Talking about each other. Silly ass people. That's why a certain generation has to die off. And a new generation be born to get the job done. With y'all silly ass. And then they reap the reward that could have been ours. I would like some of that reward. But unfortunately... I have to work with others, and these others is just some love. Yeah, they way out in la-la land. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. My time is up. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. I'm using comment approval because I'm tired of these silly fools writing, sitting, writing silly stuff on my page. I'm Audi. I'm Audi 5000. Till next time, y'all. Alrighty then, that's the end of what we want to say today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you for supporting the Reality Temple on Earth Ministry. I'll see y'all on the flip flop and uh, take it easy. Again, thank you for your support of this ministry and uh, your views. And like I say, as always, respect you. And I'm already 5,000. Till next time, y'all.